Our next speaker is Dr. Charles O'Cheng, uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Charles and I go back a long way. Um, he uh, lived in Kisumu, Kenya, and his wife, um, I think she had had some difficult deliveries, but she was having problems with other forms of contraception. He found it very challenging to find a vasectomist in Kenya at the time. He looked online. I think that's how he found me. He sent me an email and I said, wow, a guy from Kenya. Well, we worked things out and Charles had never been outside of Kenya, Uganda, and Southern Sudan, but was motivated enough to learn how to do vasectomy, to go all the way from Kisumu to Nairobi, to Amsterdam, to Detroit, to Tampa. <laughs> we spent a week together and he, um, he, he caught on right away. I mean, he is so, is such a fine vasectomist technically that if I hadn't had one, he could do it. So um, Charles has been the backbone of vasectomy in East Africa. And now um, he's gonna talk a little bit, as you know, that's a low resource area. Uh, sometimes it might be hard to get things. And one of the things that might be a little bit hard to get is, is cautery tips or batteries. So I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about um, strategies and low resource settings. So you can be able to see my disclosure there. I'm a vasectomy beneficiary. I had my vasectomy 12 years ago. I'm very proud about it. And I'm also a provider in East Africa. Yeah. I'm a founder and medical director at Unam Safe Parenthood Initiative, where we encourage men to, to have just enough, uh, enough children. Sometimes we encourage them not to have at all. Okay. Next. Yeah, so uh, why should we uh, do cost reduction when you're offering vasectomy uh, services? So we want to ensure availability, accessibility, affordability, and sustainability. Uh, before, here in Africa, we ha we've had uh, vasectomy programs which were rolled out, but uh, the programs fizzled out after a short period, like after two, three years. But this time we are trying to make sure that we make it so simple that we can be able to sustain it maybe for the next uh, 10, 20 years. And we want to make sure that the, all the services are standardized in such a manner that uh, whatever service is offered in Nairobi, in Kisumu, uh, anywhere else in East Africa, it should be the same. Not that one side is doing a different service uh, apart from the other. And then we have to make sure that the healthcare providers are safe you can be able to see the justification for uh, for rolling out vasectomy services, particularly in Kenya. The maternal mortality rate is very high. We lose like 362 uh, women per 100,000 lives. So uh, we find that to be unacceptable. And uh, 99, almost 99.9% .9 of family planning is done by women. So we find that to be quite unacceptable. We can't just allow men to enjoy sex without also participating in family planning. And poverty rates are also quite high. Uh, like here in Kenya, poverty rates are like 36.2%. And we know that uh, with good uh, family planning services, we can do it with it. There's a lot of environmental degradation. Right now, the forest cover is 7%. We are trying to push it to 10% by the year 2030. So you can see a little bit vasectomy will come in, yeah? Because when, the, when there are so many people around, you may not be able to expand your forest cover. Traffic congestion, for the people who have come to Kenya already, people like Dog Stay, Jonathan Stark, you've seen the kind of traffic jam that we have in this part of the world. And it is estimated that we lose about $1 billion per year here in Kenya just to traffic congestion alone. So that is unacceptable. Unemployment is very high also. Like now with COVID, uh, young people have lost jobs. Uh, right now, the unemployment rate is about 10%. Yeah, And even social distancing in this era of the uh, pandemic is difficult, yeah? When people are so congested and overcrowded. Illegal immigration is really a problem. You know, people are trying to immigrate to, to, to Europe, to Italy, to France, to US. And sometimes they do this illegally. You've had stories of people, the stowaways who, who die uh, in, uh, in the Mediterranean, um, 
and the Red Sea, yeah, because you no know, people are desperate. They're looking for a place of comfort, yeah. And then we have also an implant, unplanned and unwanted pregnancies, which is about uh, 43 to 45 percent. So we hope eventually this vasectomy will, will help us uh, sort out some of these uh, problems. Next, please. Yeah, so these are the stages for cost cutting, yeah? And when we're doing cost cutting, we have to ensure there's quality and safety uh, of the procedure. So these are the stages during the booking, pre op and post op counseling, the PPEs, these are the personal protective equipment, during anesthesia, cautery, partial interpositioning, and accounts. Next, please. Right, so during booking, um, we have this, uh, the Google Calendar, which is embedded on our website, and the clients can be able to, to book their procedures from whatever part of the world that they are in. And so when they book, I just get the, the bookings as email prompts on my, on my phone. Next, please. Right, uh, so these are the things we do online. Uh, Pre-op and post-op counseling is done online. There's minimal role of the nurse, because patients can be able to read for themselves on their phones. Uh, and we use this to cancel uh, clans from across the borders. We, we, we get clans from Kenya and from the other East African countries. Sometimes we get clans from as far as Dubai. Uh, the other time we got one from Turkey. So they come in when they are already canceled. So it also encourages medical touring, tourism. So they use them. Um, so when they fly in, maybe they come to tour Masai Mara or these other parts of the country. And before they go back to their country, they come for the sleep at our clinic, which I think is very nice. Uh, so uh, the, the, the information that you give them during a, a pre and post-op counseling includes what is no scapular vasectomy. A lot of us here in Sub-Saharan Africa still think that vasectomy is a castration, yeah? like the one they do for bulls, where you use a badizo to crush uh, testicles. But we try to explain to them using diagrams that we are, we are just interested in, the, in that tube that transports uh, sperms, right? So we, ex we also explain, we, we also explain to them the eligibility criteria. Uh, so there's no absolute contraindication to, uh, to vasectomy. Any person who is above uh, 21 years old, whether he has a child or not is eligible so long as there's no uh, medical condition that uh, can, that will uh, avoid that. So registration, we also take them through the registration questionnaire and uh, we, we ask the demographics, past medical history, past surgical history. We ask them, why did you, why are you interested in vasectomy? Most of them, they say that uh, they're interested in vasectomy because of the side effects of family planning on, on, on their wives. And, and also, most of them, they say they have already achieved their reproductive health goal, so they come in for vasectomy. We also ask them how they heard about us. Most of them, they say that they heard about us through, um, through our website or through the social media, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, and things like that. They also sign a consent form online, and then we do a pre- and post-op uh, counseling also. Right, next. Now, for the PPEs, uh, uh, um, most of the time we do vasectomy is just using home clothes um, because it is a percutaneous procedure. Apart from the home cloth, no previous, yes, yeah. We use a, a surgical mask. Uh, we use a sterile latex gloves. And the patient must have a mask too. If they came in using a cloth mask, uh, we give them the surgical mask because we, we tend to regard uh, all patients to be to, to be infectious, so we must they must have masks. So their temperatures have to be screened at the entry at the pre-entry level. They have to wash their hands, sanitize at the door, and we don't allow overcrowding at the reception. So we only allow one uh, client to be accompanied by one person maximum. So either it is a wife or a, a close friend is coming in. Next, please. Yeah, so uh, for anesthesia, you either use the spray applicator or a small gauge needles. Next, please. Yeah, so for our colleagues who work in Europe and uh, USA, I think you are well conversant with this. Right, next, please. Now, 
let's look at the advantages of the spray applicator. So um, it's good for patients who are nidophobic, and it's also good for high volume, high resource settings. Uh, like some of our colleagues, like Michelle Brake, uh, Ron Ways, Douglas Train, I know they do a lot of uh, vasectomies. So they need something which is very fast, like the spray applicator. It is fancy and modern. It delivers very small volumes of an anesthesia, maybe 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 cc of anesthesia. And uh, you don't have to raise the skin wheel. It can be able to anesthetize both the skin and the paravasal sheet. And there's no need for sharps containers. Next, please. Yes, now these are the disadvantages of the spray applicator. This, it has a very high initial cost. Uh, it costs up to about 60,000 Kenya shillings, and you, have, you need specialized training uh, needed for you to use it. Uh, and then there's a problem in uh, sterilizing the tip, the extender tip in between the patients. And it can also, be, it can also injure and, uh, and anesthetize the surgeon's fingers. So for beginners, uh, you need thimbles to protect yourself. And there's a theoretical risk of transmission of uh, illnesses, for example, HIV, hepatitis B. And sometimes you can fail. Like if you have a guy with very thick uh, scrotal skin, uh, the, the, the jet can fail and then use uh, needles to anesthetize. And for servicing and maintenance, you have to ship it back to the mother factory in the, in the USA. Right, next please. Yeah, so for us, this is what we use. Next, please. Now, uh, these are the disadvantages of needles. Yeah? The site of the needle can be a barrier to access of care. Uh, you need a sharp container, and it can be slow as compared to the spray applicator. And you need a lot of anesthetic solution as compared to the, to the jet, uh, because you need like two to three cc of uh, anesthesia. But it is considered to be traditional and archaic. Yeah, next, please. Next. Now, for, for cautery, uh, cautery and smoke exit. Yeah, so, so this is the thermal cautery. Next, please. Now, uh, cautery, uh, it has been said that it is more effective than just doing than the, just using um, uh, Vicryl, but these are the risks, yeah. Because cautery will generate a surgical smoke, which contains more than uh, about eighty toxic chemicals and byproducts. One of them being hydrogen cyanide, which is a neuro neurotoxin, which was used long time ago in the chemical well, well uh, warfare. So we have toluene, we have benzene, yeah, which is a carcinogen. Uh, but apart from these chemicals, this surgical smokes uh, has also been associated with the transmission of some viruses, for instance, the HPV, HIV, but there are also some viable bacteria which have been found uh, in the smoke, for example, some staphylococcus and uh, Neisseria. And it has been said that one, burning one gram of tissue is equivalent to smoking like three to six cigarettes, or, or, or three to six cigarettes per day. So in mitigation, you need a smoke extractor with HEPA or ULPA filters, yeah? I think like one smoke extractor would cost you like 200,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, and then apart from buying the extractor, you also need to change the filters once in a while, which is also cost. So in a low resource setting, I don't think this is uh, something that is uh, very practical. Next, please. Yeah. So we also have the hemoclips. Uh, our colleagues in Europe and the USA, I think they use, they like using, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they like using the hemoclips, but uh, but they, they're expensive and they are not really readily available in, in Kenya. So for us, we just use the victory 2-0 for partial interposition. Uh, to me, I think that the efficiency is just the same. Uh, out of the 700 cases done in the last two years, We've not had somebody who was uh, vasectomy has failed because we didn't use hemoclips. Next, please. Now, uh, we're almost done. Uh, for accounts, we use, mod uh, we use mobile pay payment platform. We have a mobile payment platform in Kenya called uh, M-Pesa, which our clients from Nairobi use. But uh, our clients from other countries, like in the uh, US, they use this thing called the Fendwave, which just works like, uh, like an M-Pesa. So NSPI, whose president is uh, 
you know him already, Dr. Douglas Tain, he arranges for transfer of funds to us uh, using the Western Union. But our insurance companies in the country are a big letdown because now they don't cover for vasectomy plus the other family planning methods. I don't know their logic or their reason. So accountant's role is minimal. We only use the, the file tax, uh, the file tax returns uh, on, at, at the end of the year. Next, please. So for way forward, we just need to consolidate these steps into a clinical court study, publish the findings in a medical journal, and repl replicate uh, our, met our method of doing vasectomies to other low resource settings in Africa and maybe other parts of the world. Next, please. Yeah, so that was me today. I was doing a vasectomy uh, using my home cloth. I had my mask on. You can see I have latex gloves. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, so this is this is me again today in the morning. I was doing fashion in the positioning using polyglacking 9120. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, and you can be able to see the simp our simple list of uh, instruments. We, we don't have the spray, the spray, uh, the matter jet there. We don't have the clips. We don't have the cautery. It's very simple, but we still achieve uh, our objective of doing very high quality vasectomies. Next, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Charles. That was that was terrific. Now, I guess everybody's eager. How many failures uh, have you had when you do not use electrocautery? Yeah, yeah. Th thank you so much, Doug, for that question. Um, I think the last few years we must have done like seven hundred. We are not as busy as you guys, but uh, so far we've not recorded any failure. And all of these 700 patients, all of them, they have my personal number, they have my personal email, they know all my social uh, network pages. So we've never reported any, any failures. Do you, do you ask men to come back for semen checks? Yes, uh, we tell them to come back after three months for semen check, yes. And what's your estimate of your return? Maybe like 30%. Uh, most of them, they don't, uh, they don't come back. Okay. I but mean, the 30... what they find difficult is the masturbation, yeah? Because when they come back to the clinic, they have to masturbate in order to obtain the semen sample. So most of them, they find that a bit of a, you know, this part of the world, people are very conservative, yeah? Okay. Yeah, so that can be a bit challenging. So you're, so you're judging your failure rate basically on unintended pregnancies more than post-vasectomy semen analysis. Uh, thank you so much, Charles, for your presentation. The next thing up happens to be something that I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be able to do, which is to present our next award. Um, Esgar Guarin is the epitome of can-do, and his wife, Lillian, otherwise known as Yiya, is a perfect match for his energy and intelligence. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working with them for this entire time. And between them, they've built a business, created a dynamic website, and at the same time, homeschooled two bright daughters who even before COVID had schedules to rival any of us. In 2017, Esgar came with us to Mexico and got a taste of working in a mobile unit furnished by DKT. He realized that this would be a way for him to expand his practice and reach people in many locations in the largely rural state of Iowa. This year, he and Yiya planned and designed a medical trailer for vasectomy that they're gonna be inaugurating at this year's World Vasectomy Day. And their mobile clinic will be undertaking its maiden voyage from December 3rd to 7th, or 10th, um, to the six largest cities in Iowa. And you'll be able to follow their progress right on the World Vasectomy Day website. Meanwhile, Yiya has joined World Vasectomy Day and become an un- um, just an important part and uh, unforgettable part of what we do because she is a very good manager. She is really helping us get things done and keep on track. And she's provided the drive, the humor, the know-how to organize these conversations. <laughs> 
all of our log logistical problems. She's just become a team member instantly. We cannot thank you both em enough and we are giving you an award of promoter of the year oh for all God. that you have done with that mobile unit. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's no sound. Uh, well, we are, we're extremely honored. We, we really are happy uh, to be part of this uh, movement. I, I have had um, uh, we have had a, a wonderful opportunity to share with uh, people who have been extremely uh, passionate about vasectomies. We, we, I have developed that particular passion. I have passed on that passion to my family, not just my wife. You can ask my, my daughters and they will tell you that they ask me for cards to tell their friends, to tell their parents to have vasectomies, which is, which is great. You know, it's, it's terrific, especially when I have two daughters. So it is, it is an honor for us to be part of World Vasectomy Day and, it's, and we're extremely excited to, to have this project going on. We've been thinking about it for the past three years and it finally is coming to fruition this year. And we hope it, the disruptive nature of the idea uh, generates the effect that we want to have, which is uh, change the mindset of men around the Midwest and, and, and in general, you know, set an example and, and change the balance between tubal ligations and, 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 and vasectomies. You know, Doug, Doug Stein, my, one of my mentors, my, the person I train with said it very clearly once, the competition is not with other surgeons, vasectomy surgeons, the competition is with tubal ligations. And that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> 